Okay, so ready to like dive into a world you might not expect. Uh, leadership training at Norfolk Naval Shipyard. I, yeah. I know yeah. you hear shipyard and you think giant ships, heavy metal, not exactly, you know, leadership seminars and all that. But here's the thing behind all the, you know, massive cranes and welding torches, there's this whole hidden world of leadership that's like absolutely critical to getting those ships built and sailing. And that's what uh, that's what we're covering today. We're time traveling back to 2003 for this deep dive. And we've got this report on a massive uh, overhaul of their training program. It's like, you know, peeking into a leadership time capsule. Kind of cool to see how things have changed. Yeah. And uh, trust me, there are some eye opening moments. Yeah, you're right. This report is like a gold mine, right? Yeah. Especially because it doesn't just tell us, you know, what they changed, but like the WHY behind it, why they felt they needed such a dramatic uh, overhaul. Exactly. And it starts with a problem I'm sure uh, you've seen in some form or another yourself, right? The shipyard realized their old way of picking like supervisors and managers mm -hmm. just wasn't cutting it. They were relying on those, uh, you know, those generic leadership programs, the kind you see at any company teaching the same like general concepts. Right. But as they found out, building a warship, not exactly the same as managing like a sales team, right? It's a trap so many companies fall into. Yeah, they invest in all this training, but they don't really analyze what good leadership even looks like, you know? Like yeah. for their specific industry with their unique challenges, it's huh. different. And in the shipyard's case, sounds like it had some real consequences. Mm. They were seeing project delays, inefficiencies, all because their leaders weren't really being set up for success in that, uh, you know, that specific environment. And that's when the light bulb went off, right? The report talks about how they realized, okay, we got to go beyond this generic stuff and figure out what set their absolute best leaders apart. Like those master performers who just, you know, consistently knocked it out of the park. Okay, I'm hooked already. Who were these master performers and what made them so good? Was it something in the water over there? Not quite, but by like, Analyzing what those top performers did, right? Like oh. on the job, day to day, not just what looked good on paper. That's where they stumbled on a gold mine. Okay, so they've realized, you know, generic leadership training just isn't going to cut it at a place as uh, complex as a shipyard, right? What they do next? Do they like hire some big shot leadership guru, fly everyone to like a retreat in the Bahamas or something? Not exactly, but they did embark on a pretty uh, rigorous process to like rebuild their whole train their leadership training from scratch really they called it the uh the pass ct process and no it's not some international treaty or anything pass ct process okay that's uh it's got a good ring to it i'll give them that but i'm all about you know breaking it down what's that actually mean so it's actually pretty logical when you look at like each piece of it pass ct it stands for performance based accelerated customer stakeholder driven and uh training and development all right I'm listening. Lay it on me so our listener can see why this is, you know, more than just a fancy acronym. Absolutely. So performance based, that means they shifted from just teaching, you know, leadership theories to really focusing on what those master performers were doing, you know, on the job every day and then accelerated. That kind of highlights the sense of urgency, right? Like they needed to get people up to speed fast, efficiently. Makes sense. Time is money, right? Especially in a shipyard, you've got deadlines, dry docks waiting, can't afford to have your leaders, you know, stuck in training forever. Exactly. And then there's customer stakeholder driven. Yeah. That part's key because it shows they were really moving away from those generic programs and tailoring the training to, you know, the shipyard's very specific needs. Because even though they're building, you know, these massive ships, they still have customers, right? Internal, external, with their own requirements. It's like they're saying, okay, enough with the, you know, the textbook stuff. Let's get real and focus on what actually moves the needle here. Yeah. In this environment with these people. Precisely. And then, of course, training and development. That's that's the whole point, right? But it kind of acknowledges that it's more than just, you know, classroom lectures. Which, I gotta say, music to the ears of anyone who's ever sat through one of those day-long trainings and retained, like, 10% of it, right? Uh, yeah. So they had this, this clear vision with PCT, but how do they actually you know, put it into action? Do they just start like yeah. asking those master performers to spill their secrets or what? Well, they definitely talked to those master performers, but in a really structured way. Like they weren't just, you know, swapping war stories over coffee. They were digging into the specifics. Like the report actually describes how they built these detailed performance models, knowledge matrices, even target audience data, all to capture that that essence of what made these leaders, you know, stand out. Like they were trying to, what, decode the DNA of a master shipyard leader or something, mm. had to ask. And was it all like spreadsheets and data analysis or did they find uh, maybe some more, shall we say, 
human insights. Oh, it was definitely data-driven, but what's fascinating is how those data points translate into these like really specific behaviors, mindsets. For example, one thing they found was that master performers were amazing at like anticipating problems before yeah. they even happen, you know? They were always looking ahead, spotting those potential bottlenecks, and proactively coming up with, you know, solutions. So not just like reacting to whatever fire popped up, but actually preventing those fires in the first place. Mm. It takes a certain kind of, I don't know, awareness, right? That proactive mindset, an ounce of prevention and all that. Exactly. And that proactive thing, it wasn't just about like individual brilliance, you know, it came from their ability to really build those strong relationships, those communication channels with their teams. They knew what questions to ask, who to ask them to, when to ask them. It's like the whole package. So communication, key ingredient in their secret sauce. Not just, you know, barking orders, but creating that environment where information flowed freely, up, down, all around. Absolutely. And this wasn't just about, like, being a nice guy or whatever, you know. This was strategic. It was about recognizing that that open communication, it's essential for spotting those issues before they become, you know, major blowouts. Which, let's face it, in a shipyard, small problem can become a massive problem real quick. Well, you got it. And this is where their whole, you know, deep dive into what made those master performers tick really starts to pay off. Because yeah. by understanding what those guys did differently, they could then see the gaps in their existing training. And uh, mm. what they found was pretty eye-opening. Okay. All right. Now you're going to be curious. What kind of gaps are we talking about here? Give me an example. <laughs> Get this. They found a whopping 67 gaps in their leadership training. 67. That's that's not just like forgetting to teach someone how to use the copier. You know what I mean? That's a system reboot. Wow. 67. All right. So we're not talking about forgetting to like cross some T's and dot some I's here. Yeah. What were some of the like the biggest things they were missing? So this one might surprise you. One of the top gaps they flagged was get this training on how to do like effective pre-job briefings. And work assignments. Sounds basic, right? You'd think that's that's Leadership 101, especially in a shipyard. Right. I mean, these are experienced shipyard supervisors, not exactly, you know, fresh out of school. What was the problem? Were they just like skipping these briefings altogether? Not really skipping them or like not always doing them effectively. The report kind of hints at this, that they were often rushed, poorly organized, which led to, you know, confusion, mistakes, sometimes even safety concerns. Uh, so it wasn't just about you know, checking the box. It was understanding that even a like a simple pre-job briefing when it's done well mm -hmm. can make a huge difference, right? Efficiency, productivity, and most importantly, keeping everyone safe. Exactly. And that's kind of key here, right? Sometimes it's the things we just assume are a given that can really trip us up. Leadership, it's not always about the, the grand vision stuff. It's about elevating the everyday, you know, sweating the small stuff that maybe gets overlooked. And in a shipyard, overlooked details can have uh, pretty big consequences. So pre-job briefings, got it. What other like seemingly small but actually crucial skills were they uh, missing from their leadership playbook? So pre-job briefings, we got a small mm. thing, big impact. What other like leadership blind spots did this whole deep dive uncover? Okay, so this one I think will resonate with anyone who's ever had to you know, manage a team training on how to actually identify a report and then resolve performance issues. Okay, all right. And not just like technical skills, right? But what they call this is interesting, human competency deficiencies. Human competency deficiencies. All right, a little jargony, but I get it. Yeah. Basically, like how to deal with those situations where it's not just someone needs a little more training on, I don't know, some software, but maybe there are personality clashes, communication breakdowns, that kind of stuff. Exactly. And the report, it highlights how supervisors, they often struggled with, you know, addressing these things effectively. It wasn't that they were oblivious to the problems. It's they just didn't necessarily have the skills, the confidence to, you know, approach those conversations in a way that was like constructive and supportive. Right. Yeah. It's like that saying, right? People don't leave bad jobs. They leave bad managers. Right. 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 And sometimes it's not even that the manager's like a bad person. It's they've just never been given the tools to navigate those those trickier, uh, what, interpersonal situations, I guess. One hundred percent. And that's where, you know, having a framework for this stuff for addressing performance, whether it's technical or interpersonal, it makes a world of difference. Yeah. Creating that culture of feedback where people feel safe, you know, raising concerns, tackling problems head on. And ultimately, it helps everyone you know, do their best work. Yeah, turning those what could be like awkward, difficult conversations into a moment 
for growth. Right. For the person, for the team, everyone. Exactly. And, you know, this ties into another big gap they found training on understanding customer and supplier needs. Oh, right. Right. Remember we talked about, like, even shipyards have customers. Right. Because at the end of the day, they're building a product. Right. A very, very complex, very important product for a, uh, a very specific customer. Exactly. And what they found was there was this disconnect sometimes between the kind of, you know, the production side, the folks on the shipyard floor and that bigger picture, customer satisfaction, supplier relationships, the whole value chain. So it's not enough to just like build a great ship in a vacuum. You got to understand where it fits in, right? The Navy's needs, the supplier's constraints, all of it. You got it. And it wasn't just about you know, being nice or whatever, providing good customer service. It was about giving those leaders a more strategic mindset. Like, hey, your decisions, they have ripple effects. It's not just your team, your department. It's the whole organization. Expanding that circle of awareness, right? Leadership isn't just what happens within the, the walls of your building or whatever. Exactly. And that awareness, that ability to connect, like, okay, my actions here, they impact the bigger picture. That's huge. That's a sign of, like, really effective leadership, no matter what you're doing. Wow. Okay. We covered some serious ground here. Who knew a deep dive into shipyard training from, what, 20 years ago mm. would have so many, like, timeless leadership lessons? It's wild, right? It just shows those fundamentals, clear communication, solving problems before their problems, that commitment to always improve. It's That's not just for shipyards. It's universal, right? Totally. Yeah. And what I like, what's inspiring about this whole story reminds us great leadership. It's not like some, you know, magical thing you're born with. It's a skill, right? Yeah. Like you can learn it, you can get better at it, you can hone it over time. And what Norfolk Naval Shipyard did, it shows us, it starts with, first of all, admitting, hey, we got gaps. Being willing to ask those tough questions mm. and, and really taking a hard look at the data at what actually works. And then, of course, actually doing something about it, having the uh, the guts to make those changes, to invest in your people, build that culture where, you know, being a great leader matters. It's celebrated. Well said. And on that note, you know, I want to leave our listener with something to think about. What's one small thing you could change today? to be a better leader, right? Doesn't got to be a huge overhaul. Even just a little shift in mindset, maybe commit to communicating more openly or or just really focus on on recognizing and developing the people around you. Those little things, those can be the spark for, you know, some really big changes. So true. So, yeah, go out there and never stop learning and lead with uh lead with intention. <laughs>